Good day. Uh, today we speak about probability definition and axioms, the basic axioms of probability. We would like to go over the following basic uh, uh, topics or objectives. We'd like to talk about experiments, sample spaces, events. We look at continuous and discrete sample spaces, the basic definition of what probability is, and the mathematical model for that, and we'll use the relative frequency. So uh, we are good to go. Experiment and sample spaces. So basically, uh, every experiment, to define an experiment, we need to define what a sample space is, and then we define a certain event, capital omega, and we associate probabilities with the outcomes. So we have an experiment that contains sample space, all possibilities, certain events, and probability associated with that. Now, we can define uh, experiments, and any single performance of experiment is called a trial. So the new words here in the slide, you'll find that they are kind of uh, blue, so to distinguish from the others. So we have a trial, which is a single performance of experiment, and what comes as a result, we call it the outcome. Trial, outcome, experiment, probability. These words come together. As an example, if you are ruling a non-biased, uh, an unbiased. Unbiased means equally likely. All sides are equal probable or equiprobable. If we are ruling a die, then the likelihood, the probability, the likelihood or probability is 1 over 6 because we have six different phases. For this experiment, the sample space is nothing but what we define here as uh, S, 1, 2, 3, uh, up to 6. And then the, uh, the related properties are equally likely 1 over 6 for all the scenarios. Now, uh, we can define or we can characterize the sample space as being discrete or continuous. Like when you, die, when you toss a, a die, you have a discrete outcomes and they're finite because we have from one to six. If you pick a positive number, positive integer, you get a discrete outcome, but the number of possibilities are infinite. And the last example, if we have a pointer in a wheel where you rot rotate the wheel, let's say it's numbered from 0 to 12 like a clock, it's a continuous uh, scenario, then the outcome is continuous. So a possible outcomes experiment could be discrete or events. Uh, once we have experiments, we have events, we have outcomes. Now, we are usually interested in specific characteristics, like uh, if we pick a person, we want to know whether he's short or tall or thin or fat, rather than being Mr. X or Mr. Y. Now, a very popular example in probability is drawing a card from a deck of 52 cards. I'm sure you're familiar with, with the uh, playing cards. And then the outcome of this, there are lots of possibilities. Now, since we have 52 cards, the total number of events, the total number of sets that we can define is 2 raised to power n, capital N is the number of possible outcomes, then you can get 2 raised to power 52, which is a huge number, approximately 4.5 times 10 raised to power 15. Here is an example of an experiment. Now, this is a, these are some statements we want to focus on. Events defined on countably, countably infinite sample space do not have to be countably infinite. For example, if you pick uh, an integer number, we could be interested in the event of this number being 1, 2, or 3. Although the possibilities are infinite, our interest in is in a finite possible outcome. Now, again, we can also say that events defined on continuous spaces are usually continuous. Like if you pick a number between 1 and 100, usually we have ranges, for example, from 1 to 2 or 3 to 4. But we can also define discrete outcomes. For example, what's the probability that you pick 3 or 4 out of the continuous range from 0 to 100? Now, having said this, given the, the meaning of experiments, uh, events, now it, we, are, we are ready to define uh, probability. Um, recall that um, to define probability, we have two ways. Either we go to the sound way, where we are exact and sure and use strong math, or we use a relative frequency, which is easy to understand, maybe is not as sound as solid, as uh, using the math, but it could give uh, the required meaning. So 
before we define we define or we present the basic axioms of probability probability has non-negative value its function of the events and it satisfies three axioms the first one it has to be non-negative it should be zero or greater okay so probability of an event a is always a positive value it can or a zero or above it cannot be negative be careful I don't want to see negative probabilities this is the way we define it probability of the sample space probability of being in one of any possible event is going to be one probability of the, of the, of the universe is equal to one this is called the certain event because it includes all possibilities now last the probability of the union of all of all possible uh, sub events or all possible subsets that are disjoint should equal to the sum of the individual probabilities now let's say that you're uh, having tossing a coin probability of having head or tail is the sum of the two because they are disjoint they cannot occur at the same time we can generalize this to lots of events and these are conditions for us to work with the probability I don't want to see to hear somebody saying that what if the probability is 2 or 3 or 4 or minus 2 we have said that it's from 0 and if it's uh, certain it's going to be 1 so it's from 0 to 1 now we can say based on our common sense our engineering and scientific observation that if you want to find the probability of event you can use relative frequency which means you repeat the experiment many times and you see what you get for example if you have a coin you toss the coin 1000 time 100,000 1 million and you see how many of these are head and how many of them are tails and then you find the ratio between the number of heads to the total number of experiments mathematically we can say it this way the number of heads over the total number and you take the limit as in uh, approaches infinity which means you have to repeat the experiment forever to get the exact number of course for this experiment to be true we should assume that we have statistical regularity which means that there is no other factors that control the outcome so if you want to get the correct numbers now uh, here are a few comments about continuous outcomes you have to be a little bit careful spinning the point of a fair wheel of a chance and again let's just assume it's from 0 to 100 like uh, here this is not from 0 to 100 but just to give you an idea what is the probability that the pointer falls between two numbers let's say these numbers are x1 and x2 what's the probability of being in this range so usually this type of, of question that you ask for continuous outcomes we are interested in ranges now if you divide this into equal distances I mean if you define the range into equal distances then we can say that the probability is going to be 1 over n for example we have 1 2 then we pick 3 and so on if we continue in the same way if these are equal spaces then like in this example now we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 then the probability of being in one of these ranges will be 1 over 6 1 over 6 and so on now uh, the probability of having a, a discrete event defined on the continuous sample space is zero if, if somebody says what if we get I want to get exactly this number with accuracy of 0 0.00000 then we say it's it's equal to zero why why the probability is equal to zero because we have infinite scenarios infinite possibilities and we're picking one of them now event can occur even if their probability is equal to zero uh, how is this possible because if you rotate the wheel it might stop at this exact point so if if you consider that the case then although it, it's the probability equal to zero it occurred so this is different than the impossible events because impossible events has probability equal to zero but it cannot happen and continuous outcomes although the probability equal to zero things could happen all right now we can do the opposite if somebody says can we have events with a probability one and may not occur the answer is yes 
if you look at the example we just mentioned, let me just get things here out. If we mention this example, um, if you look at all possibilities being in anywhere except at this specific point, then the probability is equal to 1 because this probability equal to 0 and the remaining is 1. But again, this event that has probability equal to 1 may not occur because the wheel could end up here. Again, this is different than the certain events because if you say certain event, then it means it must occur. Mathematical models of experiments. Okay, uh, we have sample space, event, and probability. Let's do this example together. I'm using colors here to simplify things. Uh, we have an event of rolling a die, and we are looking at the probability of having sum equal to 7. The second scenario would be, which is shown with blue, the probability of having uh, sum greater than 8 but less than or equal to 11, sum less than 10, and then we would like to see some combination of these, which is B union C. For example, let's start with the first one. On the side here, I'm showing you the experiment where we have one die here, another die here. We're rolling them, and the sum is shown in these squares. For example, here, 1 and 1 give you 2, 2 and 2 give you 4, and so on. So what, when do we get 7 in these scenarios? Other than that, we don't get 7. So assuming the, the, day, uh, the die, uh, dice are fair, and then we roll them, and then we have basically 36 possible outcomes. Same, 6 times 6. The probability of every one of these is 1 over 36, because we have 36 total number of probabilities, and they are equally probable. The sum should equal to 1. Now, the probability of having event A, where the sum equal to 7, how many of them do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's 6 divided by 36, or 1 6 times 6. Okay, 1 6 times 1 over 36. Okay, uh, 6 times 1 over 6, one, 6, sorry, 6 times 1 over 36. Now for the second scenario, which is B, <coughs> sorry, the question is, uh, we want the sum to be greater than 8, so we're talking about this thing here, and it should be less than or equal to 11, so we can count these scenarios here. So the answer should be um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We have 9 over 36, 9 of the scenarios, which is equal to 1 over 4. For the last case, which is sum is less than uh, or greater than 10, we have three cases, so the answer becomes 3 over 36, which is 1 over 12. For the for the union, okay, we have some we have some overlap here. We have to be careful. We don't add the numbers. So B union C, okay, B union C will give you um, the following. It will give you 10 out of 36 because we have. Uh, we have to include this also. So we end up with uh, 10 possibilities. 10 over 36 is 5 over 18. Now for this last example, we are drawing, a, we have a box of resistors, and those resistors have different values. The values could be 10 ohm, 22, 27, or 47. Inside this box, there are 18 uh, resistors of 10 ohm, 12, 33, and 17, respectively. So in the table, we're showing the, uh, the resistivity and the number of resistors in the box. So if you want, if you, the total number of uh, resistors, if you add these numbers together, you'll get 80. And uh, if somebody asks, what's the probability of drawing a first uh, resistance, it becomes 10 ohm. So it becomes 18 divided by, uh, 18 divided by 80. And then we have, uh, for the 27 ohm, it's 33 by 80. For the 47 ohms, it's uh, 17 by 80. Now, if you draw another resistance, where, um, if you draw another resistance without replacement, which means you already have taken one outside, then the new probabilities become 18 out of 79. 80 becomes 79, because there is one missing uh, resistance that's already 22 ohm. We are told that 
given that condition that the first one is 22 ohm. Now be careful, the probability of having um, 22 will be 11 now. 11 because we have already one before so, uh, drawn, which is uh, 22 ohms. For the remaining 33 over 79 and 17 over 79. So this was a simple practice. Hope that you, you got the idea. Thank you for listening.